so uh, I'm just here for like a short five minutes to like talk about the hackathon and then I'll pass it on to the winners of the hackathon to actually share about what they did. Okay, so uh, what happened last weekend was uh, we organized Asia VR, we organized the Global VR Hackathon that is uh, something that we try to do together with a few other VR communities around the world. So like uh, in Australia, in uh, China, in Finland. So there were other communities that were doing it. So at the end of this competition, we choose the winners and they'll go to China, maybe Shanghai or Beijing for a grand final round. So, yep. So uh, we had a lot of great sponsors who actually helped us uh, with these events, with prizes, with the venue, uh, swag. So they were like um, HTC Vive, uh, IMD, Pixel Labs, AMD, uh, Zenva, and Seagate as well, and uh, EXAVR, Unity, SideFX, Singapore Computer Society, Prime Technologies, and of course, uh, my company, Ignite VR. So we ran out some of the, the headsets and the computers. So uh, it was a really fun time. Uh, we actually tried to do this uh, hackathon once uh, last year, around the same time. But that was really very impromptu. And we just say, hey, just come down and just, hacking, just, just hack something together. But it wasn't so good. So this year, we decided to do it properly, have a website, uh, have sponsors, prizes, a topic, and that kind of thing. And it, and it turned out really well, I think. Yeah, so uh, the topic for this hackathon was convergence. We wanted to, people to like, do something where they can, do some, they can hack together something that is cross-industry, like, for example, education, entertainment, real estate, communications, those kind of things. So two or more industries. So, so I think over the two days period, uh, they had a lot of, uh, everybody like, formed teams and they created uh, a few really great apps. And uh, the, the top three teams were really, it was really a close fight. It was just one point between each other. That's 55.5, 54.5, 53.5. And the team that won uh, was uh, Team Foresight, okay, who will be speaking next. And uh, are they over here? Are they? Yeah, so uh, I'd like to congr congratulate them again, and then uh, I'll let them take the stage this time. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, hi guys. So we are Team Foresight. Can we have the slides, please? So yes, um, we are Team Foresight, and thank you, Asia VR, for allowing us to join this competition. So let me introduce our team members first. Um, we have Kai, who is a user experience designer. We have uh, SK, who is a machine learning AI researcher, and myself is a VR game de developer and designer. And finally, we have Jonathan, who is an architect. So all four of us are from SUTD, and we decided to form a team to join this hackathon. So apart from me, actually, this is all our first time developing VR. And especially using the HTC Vive was our first time for this competition. So what is our problem? So ha have you ever been to SUTD? It's a very, very nice campus, but it's also one of the most confusing campus we have ever been in. And if you're at a shopping mall, have you ever thought, like, where is the toilet? And then you find yourself lost, walking in circles. So this is one of the biggest problems in architecture. Sometimes you look, see this kind of thing and you wonder, like, just what is the architect thinking? So my friend Jonathan, oh yeah. So my friend Jonathan used to think about this, and then until he went into architecture and he realizes this, is, this happens because it's not because they wanted to do this, but it happens because what they thought in the head and what they want to build turns out to be different. And so why? Because it is almost, there's almost no um, infrastructure out there that allows architects to see what they design on a one-to-one -one scale. So what they use is they use very complicated technical drawings like these that users, the end users cannot really understand. And what they really understand is really true, perhaps very nice rendering of the locations and small 3D models. But these are not exactly, these do not scale well to really show you the real experience of what you're actually going to have at an on-site location. So furthermore, as a result, only, only architects and fellow colleagues discuss on the same model. And sometimes when you get so caught up on the same idea, you lose sight of what the end user might experience it for the first time. So I'll pass the time on now to Kai to, exp to explain how UX can benefit this problem. Thanks, Alan. OK, so basically, 
I'd just like to talk about like, the UX process in itself. So there are a couple of things that actually revolutionized UX. And one such thing is the way that they did eye tracking for applications. Like, the ability to actually record down what users were actually doing while they were exploring the app really changed the way we design apps. So uh, imagine in the past, you know, you, you'd ask questions, you do user studies, but then you'd find that uh, what you ask and what they did were completely different things. Like they could say, yeah, I, 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 won't, I, I will click this button, you know, it seems rather obvious. And when they were actually given a site, they look at it and then they're like, um, they didn't click the button and you're, you're all confused and stuff. But with all this data and insights, it actually showed what users were actually doing and gave everyone a clear picture of how to design your websites. This also allowed us to rapidly prototype websites and apps. So by doing so, we could test different designs very quickly. We could just send out the websites to everybody, you know, test all these things, get the data back, redesign, send it out again, test until we got a very good design. So we thought about it and, you know, wouldn't it be cool if you could do the same thing using, uh, with architecture using VR? Because VR is a really good medium to actually show architecture in 3D space. And if we could record the data of what users were doing in 3D space, then this would be a pretty useful thing, right? So I'll hand it over to SK here who will talk about the product that we, we did for the hackathon and it's really exciting. Thanks, Kai. Hope everyone's having a good evening. Um, okay, so basically, a lot of people are curious about how do we actually come to the idea. And I think it matters a lot on the platform you're actually using. So first off, we had to identify like, what are the unique features of VR itself. It's not that we can visualize things in 3D. It's the fact that we can actually experience the whole building. Because visualizing things, humans can actually do that from 2D mediums such as renders and photos our perception of depth is actually quite spectacular. So experiencing the building in itself is actually not enough to give us a good understanding of how to build better buildings. So what else can we do? We are need to quantify the experience. And what do I mean by this? We present UX for architecture. And what our solution is, is that we want to be able to give architects data, data that they can act upon to build better physical and virtual spaces. So roughly, how does it work? So as an architect, you'll usually start off in your typical CAD modeling software, such as Rhino, SketchUp. And these models are extremely complicated with close to 10,000 vertices and a lot of faces. This doesn't do very well in VR because it's too complex for the engine to render. So what our software does is helps to reduce the complexity, and we add our data analytics on top of the model itself. And we then ship off this model to all Gear, Gear VR users. We picked Gear VR simply because of the accessibility, so we can scale up really easily, because not everyone has access to a HTC Vive and so on. So by sending out all your models in real time, you could think of it as crowdsourcing or beta testing your models without actually having to build your building. So after sending out all the models, all the data from all the users is tracked and collected and send back to the HTC Vive, where the architect can review and analyze the data of gaze and movement. So this is roughly how it looks like. It's a little pixelated, because it's a screenshot. But basically, you can see how your users are moving through the scene. You can look at where they're looking at. And you can find out points of, yeah. So you can get movement and gaze direction. So what is this data? Like, what are the insights you can get out from this data? You can find out where people are getting lost, where they're getting confused, how they're moving throughout your building, the hot spots. You, can, you would notice that in some shopping centers, there are a lot of areas where there aren't a lot of pedestrian traffic. This is because like, when an architect is designing something, he, doesn't, he has certain assumptions that he needs to test. So in order to quickly test their theories and design assumptions, you could send out models and get immediate feedback on whether or not your design theories are true or not. And gaze data is another really important feature. The fact that you can find out what exactly are people drawn towards and what do they not care for. So it works really well in retail, especially, when you want to do A-B testing to find out whether the product placement of shelf A, shelf B, or a certain retail space has to be in a certain arrangement in order to increase customer engagement. So as I said, advertising. And another one would be game development, we think, for virtual spaces. And 
virtual storytelling in the sense that imagine if people weren't so attracted to a certain asset in the game. You could realize that, hey, maybe I can increase engagement by switching it out for a more interactive and more engaging medium. Asset, sorry. Yep. Thank you for your time. Hope you have a good evening. So, so that was, I think that was really awesome and they're going to represent Singapore and Southeast Asia for uh, the global hackathon in China. So, uh, hope they'll do us proud. And also one last thing, uh, we, are, we are going to start planning for the next year's uh, hackathon as well. So, do, give us, do let me know if you want to be involved in the organization committee. Alright, let's make one that is bigger and better and hopefully can cover more uh, get more participants from uh, across Southeast Asia as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you.